you know, I was really proud of the Duterte administration. But before that, I was a government critic. And in all my years before that, under Noy Noy, under Gloria, I was always a, a very active critic. But not once was I threatened with the loss of my livelihood yes. for, ano, for saying something. Hindi ito first six months. Patigidig na tayo magdadalawang taon na. Pero anong nangyayari? Instead of more information, we get less. Instead of more service, we see less. Mr. President, ano na? Duterte admin walang pagbabanta kahit may mga nagpapahayag ng kanilang kritisismo. Ito ang pagmamalaking pahayag ni Attorney Trixie. Na ikumpara nito ang Duterte administrasyon at ang kasalukuyang administrasyon na tila may opresyon ng nangyayari na imbes na atupagin ang solusyon sa problema. Samantala sa ibang balita, kinukumpirma ngayon ng Malacanang ang nakatakdang pagbiyahe ni Pangulong Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. patungo ng Australia sa darating na February 28 to 29. Ayon sa Malacanang, pibisita doon ang Pangulong bilang guest of the Australian government. Alin sabay nito ay nakatakda ring pirmahan ng ilang mga kasunduan na magpapalakas sa ugnayan ng Pilipinas at ng Australia sa darating na Nobyembre ay ipagdiriwang ang ikapitong putwalong anibersaryo ng diplomatic relations ng Australia o ng Pilipinas. To tell the people how you view things right now, lalo na po doon sa take-off ng iyong uh, pagpapahayag na nakakabahala ang kalagayan sa malayang paghahayag at pagsasalita na ginagarantiyan ng mga batas na tinalo na nagsaligang batas. Go ahead po, Atty. Rix. Uh, sumampa ang ating Pangulo bilang leader ng ating bayan with a lot of good plans. Marami siyang, uh, marami siyang na pag-aralan na tungkol dun sa mga problema ng bayan. At nilahat niya ito dun sa kanyang zona, zona number one. Makikita natin dito na nirirespeto niya ang kalayaan magsalita at magbahayag. Pinuntirya niya ang uh, presyo ng pagkain, tubig, kuryente, uh, transportasyon. So ngayon, sa gitna ng maraming problema na nakikita natin, natural, i-expect ng isang leader na may mga aangal sa taong bayan. Ini-expect natin ang kritisismo. When things don't go well, kasalanan mo man o hindi, i-expect mo ang taong bayan ay magsasalita. Pero yung pagsasalita na yon, nakikita natin may opresyon na. Hindi na ito basta may napipikon, hindi ito simpleng bagay na uh, may nagtatampo. Doon sa isang sinabi mo, natural yan, tao yan eh. Hmm. Pero makikita natin, may systematic oppression. Hindi na po ito basta-basta. Hmm. Halimbawa, uh, in, alam natin, may mga networks dyan na ine-endanger ang prangkisa. May mga na-detain. May mga hmm. natanggal sa trabaho. Tama. Gawa ng utos ng isang mataas na opisyales. Tapos, hindi lang yan ha. Nagbabayad ang gobyerno or at the very least, hindi nila sinasalungat yung balita na may mga trolls na binabayaran ng gobyerno para atakihin ang ordinaryong mamamayan na nais lamang magsalita at magpahayag ng kanilang damdamin at saloobin. Sa gitna ng mga krisis, may krisis tayo sa uh, Korean... Wala. Ay, sorry. Okay, Attorney Trixie, uh, mukhang uh, nagkaroon ng interruption po sa inyong huling mga sinabi. Yes, Try natin again. Okay na po. Okay, go. Okay. So, na, nakikita natin sa gitna, may krisis tayo sa kuryente. Hindi nila pinag-uusapan yan. Nagtaas ang presyo ng tubig. Nagtataas ang presyo ng pagkain. Sa gitna ng lahat ng ito, ang unang nilang naiisip, baguhin ang saligang batas at matahimikin ang ilang mga taong nagsasalita at nagpapahayag. Saan ka nakikita na ganun ang reaksyon? Na imbis na atupagin ang solusyon sa mga problema na alam naman nila kung ano yung mga solusyon na yon ay ang aatupagin nyo yung kritisismo. Yes. Ang aatupagin, pagbabago sa saligang batas. Na hanggang ngayon, hindi nila ini-explain kung ano ang specifics nun. So, natural, magtatanong tayo, nakikita natin may mga government officials, nagpapabaya, sino bang in charge sa tubig? Yes. Sino bang in charge sa kuryente? Sino bang in charge sa deteriorating conditions ng ating environment? Marami tayong problema. Pero yung mga kalihim, parang wala tayong naririnig sa kanya. But the buck stops with the leader. Exactly. Kasi na sa leadership na yan. Kung ang mga tao mo hindi nagpo-perform, natural magtatanong ang taong bayan, Mr. President, ano na? Pero anong nakukuha natin? Uh, maswerte tayo kung dead ma lang eh. 
<laughs> but instead, may oppression. Yes. Bakit ganun? May problema, pero you shoot the messenger. It, now, hindi na, binigyan, ito yung maganda pa niya, na? Binigyan natin ng oras. Hmm. Hindi po ito first 100 days. Hindi ito first six months. Patigidig na tayo magdadalawang taon na. Pero anong nangyayari? Instead of more information, we get less. Instead of more service, we see less. Tapos, napaplay up pa yung leisure ng ating Pangulo. Mm-hmm. Concerts, parties. Can you blame the people if they are upset? Can you blame the people if they will criticize? But what are the reactions to blaming and criticism? Oppression. It's not how government works. Mm-hmm. Mayroon yung guarantee ng free speech. Nakalagay sa saligang batas, no law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech or for, of expression. Ama. Sinasabi dito, nililimitahan yung power ng gobyerno na limitahan ang ating kalayaan magsalita at magpahayag. Pero, imbis na respetuhin, imbis na i-uphold ang saligang batas pagdating sa ating kalayaan magsalita at magpahayag, eh nadidiminish pa. Mm. So what, what, are, what are we expected to do? Alam niyo ba na the right to free speech is a social valve? Nagre-release siya ng pressures. Siyempre, yes. mm. di ba? Nagkakaroon mm, ng correct. social pressures, societal pressures. Mm. Uh, poverty alone is one of the biggest pressure system, pressure uh, pressures on society. So, binibigay ng saligang batas yung pagkakataon na makavent ang taong bayan. But instead of venting, you see threats. You see threats on re- removing franchises. Removing hosts, flaws, uh, you see accounts on social media getting taken down. And the worst part is, walang explanation. Yeah. Attorney, walang ka- yes, yeah. attorney, uh, attorney, attorney Thank question. You, so, attorney, yeah, attorney question. So, uh, itong oppression uh, that you're talking about right now, is this the first time that you're feeling it? Is this the first time that you're experiencing it? Oh, oh definitely. Kasi kahit... Noon, matagal na tayong nag a you know, I was really proud of the Duterte administration. But before that, I was a government critic. And in all my years before that, under Noinoy, under Gloria, I was always uh, uh, very active critic. But not once was I threatened with the loss of my livelihood yes. for, ano, for saying something. Yes. At yes. Po, kinakausap nila ako, sasabihin, bakit mo sinabi to? Bakit ganito? May mga ganon. Uh, may papadala sa akin na government official at sasabihin, alam mo, hindi naman yan yung intention ng gobyerno. Pero there was movement on their party would somehow address the criticism. Pero they would never tell me na tanggalin ka namin sa ganyan. Attorney, attorney so um, under the under PRRD, no, when I worked with him, the very clear understanding of PRRD that uh, press freedom and freedom of expression is of utmost importance. It is uh, these are rights above all other rights, freedoms above all other freedoms, because it will redound to the good of the country. No, so um, so my question to you, attorney. In other words, no. In other words, the former president had a very deep understanding of what democracy is, and he was an astute ex- chief executive. No, he he wasn't. He didn't care what others said, but what the press said. He just kept on kept keeping on, di ba? So, maliwanag sa kanya, I'm here in government to serve the people. Di ba? So, at saka, wala siyang tinatago, di ba? So, ang tanong ko kasi dito, kasi itong nakikita ko ngayon, napaka, napaka-praning ng administrasyon na ito, at napaka-sensitive, no? Napaka-sensitive. Na, na simpleng dissent ay parang hindi nila kaya. So, my question, does it mirror, what does it say? Does it say that uh, the sitting president has no idea what it's what it is like to be an executive is that what it means that he has no idea what his what his job is is that is that is that uh, a, a clear um reading of what's going on right now ganito yun doc eh. yeah. um if he doesn't know he ought to know yeah. it is his man the yes. supreme court has already said public officials cannot be on your skin uh, criticism is a vital part of democracy kaya na demokrasya ito kasi may dynamic. Government must listen to the people because government gets its power from the people. The entire mandate of the whole system of government rests on the people's choice. When we go to the polls, when we elect them, and yes, when we suffer their governance, it's all because we give them that power. And they are in power simply because we allow them yes. to take power. So The least that they can do for us is listen. Yes, attorney. So, 
uh, you are a student of history, yeah? You are a student of history, and I strive to be one as well. So what happens to an administration that turns a deaf ear on its people? Pag, kasi ma, na, uh, mukhang ayaw nila ng batikos, mukhang bawal yon, no? At mukha bang may papayag dito? Wala namang papayag doon kasi demokrasya tayo. No? So what will happen to an, an administration where they do not listen to the people? Diba, we mentioned earlier on that the freedom of speech acts as a pressure valve. Without that pressure valve, yes. if you oppress or you suppress the freedom of speech, pressures build up. And what happens at the end of that? But there is social unrest. We're lucky if it's just unrest. Yeah. But then eventually these things could zoom towards something else. And we know we are, you know, we are no strangers to changes in government. It, we've had in the past, what, 40 years, we've had two. And then, but in the beginnings of our government come from a revolution. A revolution also brought about by increasing societal pressures. Mm -hmm. So you should take a page from previous rulers, those who have turned a deaf ear, particularly to concerns about lifestyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes. Hindi, it's not something that we should ano, treat frivolously. The, the, the removal of two presidents were due to the to what people would see as excesses in lifestyle. Mm. So maybe he should. It would be a good idea for any leader to remember this. Yeah, correct. Claro. I will say simply that I am one hundred.